I'm going to be brutally honest with everyone. I have never seen Indiana Jones 2, 3, nor 4. But I did see Raiders of the Lost Ark yesterday for the first time ever. And I gotta tell you, that movie slapped. I kind of hate myself for not seeing this movie sooner. But after watching it, I now truly understand why this is such a beloved cult classic. And why it's one of the greatest adventure films. And also one of the greatest films ever created. And it is amazing how this film still holds up to this day. And then I saw Dial of Destiny. And then after that... I asked myself the question, what went wrong? So Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the fifth and I think the final installment in the Indiana Jones franchise. The film is directed by James Mangold, who directed one of my personal favorite films of all time, Logan. The film stars Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Matt Mikkelsen, and Boyd Holbrook. So the movie is about Indiana Jones racing against time to achieve a legendary dial that can change the course of history. Accompanied by his goddaughter, he soon finds himself squaring off against Jürgen Bowler, who is a former Nazi that works for NASA. Now, as someone who has only seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Dial of Destiny right after that, I can definitely say that there is a drastic change in quality. Now, before I get into the problems that I have with this movie, I'm going to talk about the good. And the first thing is, well, it should be obvious. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones is one of the best castings I've ever seen in movie history. After watching Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Dial of Destiny, you can tell that Harrison Ford truly loves the character of Indiana Jones. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, he is this confident, charismatic, charming badass who is not afraid to get the job done and will do whatever it takes. And just like me, he has a fear of snakes. And then in Dial of Destiny, he's kind of like this washed up, soon to be retired, I'm just ready to get this over with mentality. But even how he is in Dial of Destiny, he is still one of the best parts of that entire movie. But I will admit, I personally think that he has more emotion in Dial of Destiny than compared to Raiders of the Lost Ark. But if I had to pick which version of Indiana Jones I want, give me Raiders of the Lost Ark Indy. But I still love both versions of the character and I just love Harrison Ford's performance and commitment to the character. In Dial of Destiny, this version of Indiana Jones it kind of gave off a bit of a Logan vibe to it. You have this older guy who was no longer in his prime and he's just ready to just retire and live the rest of his life in peace. But one more mission gets him back in the saddle and I just enjoyed seeing Harrison Ford on screen as Indiana Jones and just seeing the character as a whole. Now the first 20 minutes of this movie is awesome and honest to God, if the first 20 minutes of this film was the entire movie, I would have been fine with it. The first 20 minutes is like a flashback to Indiana Jones and his younger days fighting against the Nazis and it introduces Matt Mikkelsen's character and his motives. But the action and the familiarity and the flavor of the old school Indiana Jones films was present in the first 20 minutes and it was just awesome. It was just an epic adventure of classic Indiana Jones and it was pretty intense and immersive. But personally, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think that movie had way more tension because I'm gonna be honest, Practicality. That's what made Raiders of the Lost Ark special to me. The use of practical effects. Now I will admit, the de-aging of Harrison Ford in this movie was incredible. It looked amazing from start to finish. Now keep in mind, the first 20 minutes, that entire segment took place at nighttime, so it made it easier for the special effects team. But I have to admit, that is some damn good de-aging. I think there may have been a couple of times where the dialogue didn't sync up with his lips, but for the most part, it looked pretty damn good. And as the movie progressed forward, I started to see where the entire budget of this movie went to. Mads Mikkelsen was great. You know what I will admit about Mads? Even if he is in a shitty movie, he will make sure that he is one of the best parts of the entire film. Like, he could be in a movie that is legitimate and utter crap, but he will make sure that his performance stands out. And honestly, I thought he was great. He was a very good villain in a way. He was a calm, stoic, and menacing villain with motives that like, hey, I get why you're doing it, but it's wrong. But as a, from a villain standpoint, I get it. Now, in the first 20 minutes of the film, where they're setting up Mass Mikkelsen's character and how he ties in with Indiana Jones, there is a scene where he gets smacked by a train rail light and he goes flying. And then later on, he turns out to be alive, not even a scratch on his face or a mark. And it's like, maybe that Dial of Destiny does do wonders. I see why he's after it, because in real life, no human being could have survived that. Like, no one. That's all I got for the pros. <laughs> on to the bad my biggest problem with this movie the over usage of cgi every single action scene car chase scene or any form of action going on on screen it was all cgi and you could honest to god tell it was when you compare this to raiders of the lost ark and how a lot of those scenes were practical and they used a lot of practical effects 
And then you look at Dial of Destiny and how majority of it is literally just CGI. That is where I started to realize there is a giant decrease in quality. And that I did not like. Because how do you go from using practical effects to just using full-on CGI? Like, to me, it just comes across as kind of lazy. And if you are going to use CGI, at least make it look good. Like, you could tell they were just on a green screen the entire time. And it was just... It was embarrassing. Like the car chase scene, you could tell that was predominantly CGI. And sure, it may have looked good in a couple of scenes, but as a whole segment, it just looks so unsatisfying to see. I am not trying to bash on the usage of CGI. I don't have a problem with CGI usage. My thing is this. If you're going to use it, make it look good. And if you have the opportunity to use practical effects, why not use it? You know what I mean? I just think it looks better and it actually supports and sells the movie better in my opinion. But... That's just me. Now, Phoebe Waller, Bridges' character, she was kind of annoying. I won't lie. <laughs> when you meet her, she's this fast-talking, quippy intellectual. And it's like, okay, she could be cool. But then as the movie went on, she just became really, really annoying. And you could tell it felt that Indy was more annoyed with her than actually liked her. You know what I mean? Maybe that was the intention, but I just felt that there could have been more love between this dynamic. Not like love, like intimate, because, you know, that's his goddaughter. But just like some sort of form of caring like hey you were someone that i knew from my, or let me rephrase that you are the goddaughter of someone i knew from my past the least i can do is show some sort of love and appreciation but it just felt that they were rather more annoyed with each other than actually cared for each other and that kind of rubbed me the wrong way now maybe in the last 40 minutes i kind of started to like her character more but she was just annoying as a whole character, just flat out obnoxious. Now, as far as from an acting standpoint, I thought Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I keep calling her Bridges, it's Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I thought she was good. I generally thought her acting was good. It's just that her character was just so damn annoying. Now with Teddy, I didn't care for him. Now, I know there is a character in one of the Indiana Jones movies. I believe his name is called Short Round. And I felt that that's what Teddy was supposed to be. He's supposed to be a character of Short Round. But I just found Teddy to be rather annoying and just kind of in the way. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, why exactly are you here? He didn't really serve no real purpose to the characters or let alone the story, I should say. I don't know. That's just me. I don't think Teddy really did anything. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't care for Teddy. And honestly, I, I did not like the ending. <laughs> I just didn't. And I'll be honest. One of the scenes I can't talk about because it involves spoilers, but it involves the dial itself. And there were certain choices made with the dial that I truly felt that would have changed the course of history, literally, because, again, can't talk about it, spoilers, but I felt that that moment could have caused some significant impact in the future. But it looks like it didn't, so I guess not. But as far as, like, the second thing that I didn't like... By the very end, all the characters that you saw from all the other predecessor films, they all show it up in the very end of the movie, and it just felt like nostalgia bait. It felt that Lucasfilm wanted a way to get people to see this final Indiana Jones film, and they thought to themselves, hey, all the characters or all the iconic characters from the predecessor films, let's bring them all in here like one big happy family, and it just felt cheap to me, you know what I mean? I just... It just felt so uninteresting, so unmotivated, and just lazy. Just overall, just lazy. When you milk a franchise for too long, it goes off the rails, and then people just start to hate it. Lucasfilm, stop it. Pull the plug. Cut it out. In the end, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, it's, eh. Like, I feel that more people who are more diehard Indiana Jones fans, I feel that they're probably going to dislike this movie and walk out disappointed. For me, who's only seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, Dial of Destiny is okay. Like it's it's an okay movie. As a matter of fact, the more I think about it, I wouldn't even say okay. It's just not memorable. It's not a movie that I don't think I want to watch again. And also, why was this movie two hours and thirty minutes? Like, what was the reason? Like, if you look back at Raiders of the Lost Ark, that movie was an hour and fifty minutes. This movie was two hours and thirty minutes. Why? <laughs> Why did the movie need to be that long? What was the reason? But yeah, y'all, like I said, bro, Indiana Jones 5, a lot of Indiana Jones fans are going to walk out disappointed and upset. For me, like I said, 
At first, I thought it was okay. Then now, thinking about it, it's pretty forgettable. And honest to God, I do not see myself watching this anytime soon. But I will say this. I'm going to go and watch The Predecessors. And I feel that those movies will make me appreciate the franchise more compared to Dial of Destiny. So, plugging Indiana Jones and The Dial of Destiny into the rank system, I am going to place this one into the negative zone. Also, after walking out of Dial of Destiny, I found out that apparently Shia LaBeouf played Indiana Jones' son or something like that. And this movie didn't mention him not once, so... Woo! <laughs> but yeah, that is pretty much my review for Indiana Jones 5. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought about Indiana Jones 5. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What's your favorite moment from this entire franchise? Is The Last Crusade the true ending of Indiana Jones? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you all in the next one. After working up the nerve, almost equal in size I walked around with the iron for any wrinkle in time I paid a piece of my mind for every nickel and dime But never less than a five and never slept on a job A killer trap with your squad, yet never left the garage When your God was close enough to see the flesh of his eyes Get to the button and press it's what the message advised What's the threat behind the messes where the testament lies?